hey y'all welcome back to my channel if you're new welcome to my channel i normally just make mom content showing my in and my outs of being a stay-at-home mom and i am here with an updated video about everything that you need to know in regards to being a military spouse so two years ago i made a video about this but I'm doing an updated one because I'm now four years in. So my perspective on it has changed since two years ago. My feelings towards it have changed. And like, just a lot has changed. So I feel like this is um, one of my most... Sorry, y'all. I'm trying to get comfortable because I'm on the floor. Every time I make a video, I have gas. <sighs> Let me take a deep breath. Okay, so this is one of my most liked videos on my YouTube channel, my most watched videos. Um, a lot of women are supporting their husbands. A lot of men are supporting their wives going into the military. So I definitely wanted to make a updated version of just like everything I feel like you should know. So I have five points that I'm going to make in this video and all of them are like very important. So I highly suggest that you take note of what I'm saying. And after you watch this video, you go back and you have a conversation with your husband or your wife about the process and how things are going to be as far as you guys being married and being a military family. So the first thing I'm gonna talk about is communication and agreement. That's my first point. Um, my husband helped me with this because you know, yeah. Uh, work environment, This the communication agreement goes um, in regards to like communicating the work environment, communicating scheduling, mental health for the both of you guys. So. One thing I'm gonna point out is this. From two years ago, I really, when I made the video, I really talked about like my perspective on being a military spouse as far as like dealing with being alone, dealing with having to adapt to just a whole new lifestyle for myself as a wife and a mother. Well, I was about to be a mom in that video. But now that I have two children, things have obviously changed. But I want to point out like communication as far as you and your husband or wife. So when you are becoming a military spouse, it is very, very important that y'all talk about this. Okay, because now I didn't go through the process of my husband joining and we were already married. So I had to go through basic training and, you know, him being away for several months. But because I'm going to be joining the military myself he will have to go through that and we have definitely talked about like how he will feel um about me being gone for so long how he will navigate through being working because he's still serving how he will navigate through working and then coming home and taking care of the children for the time being that i'm away so me and my husband kind of play like scenario which is actually really fun because I get to know him more and he gets to know me more because we are taking real life situations that can happen and we're giving real reactions to it, which lets one, like it lets us know where each other's mindsets are and like how we can help them through it, what we need to improve on and like what we feel like, okay, this is not gonna be a factor in our marriage at all. Like we got this down in the bag. So that's really what I mean about communication and agreement. If you are already married and your husband or your wife is thinking about joining, then y'all need to talk. Obviously, he cannot tell you how it is going to be in the military. But what you guys can talk about is like potential factors that may play, uh, may have a effect on your marriage, both in a positive and a negative way. So a lot of the times people feel like that the military is going to provide them better, better, just to provide them a better space or a lifestyle for them and their family. And it does because you do get housing if you choose to live on post. You get um, 
all of these resources as far as um, healthcare, your wife gets resources as far as like counseling, Military One Source offers counseling. I know the children get free healthcare. They have really good schools, things like that on posts for the children, lots of stuff like that. But no one really like takes the time out to think about like, okay, there's all these positives, but what are the negatives that will affect us? How will it affect our marriage? And this is like one of the things that actually ends up like breaking up marriages. Like you don't understand how many people I have met and they're married and um, they don't really last very long. Like they're new to the military life. They get stationed on the base that I'm stationed on because I'm stationed in Fort Bragg still. And a lot of people come to this base. They come here, they're very optimistic. And then slowly as I like see them, I can run into the, the mother. Like most of the time I'm meeting moms and I'll run into them at the parks or like at libraries and things like that, or even the commissary. And I'll ask like how things are going, like an update, like, you know, like, how do you feel now? And they're less optimistic about it. They're not liking it. They don't know how to deal with this, this big, like the big change of like, this is our life now. And shortly after they end up going back home to their families. So one of the biggest things that I will say you need to need to need to need to do is you need to communicate with your partner about this change. This is a lifestyle change. You may move somewhere that is far from home. You may have been raised all your life in a certain place and now all of a sudden you live a thousand and thousand and thousand miles away from your family and you don't know anybody. And because your husband or your wife is working, you can't depend on them to kind of help you through this change, which results into a lot of people ending up like just going back to where they're from and what they know. So you definitely just need to talk about these changes. So I guess I would say definitely talk about the moves, like where we could possibly get stationed that's far away. You guys need to talk about how that's going to affect y'all as far as y'all marriage. You guys need to talk about raising children in this lifestyle. If you don't have any children, you can keep yourself busy with working, going to school, doing lots of stuff. But if you do have children, it's not that you can't work or you can't go to school, but it becomes a little harder to do these things. And you need to talk about it. You need to talk about how one another can support each other through this stuff and then also like the scheduling of like the military like the p possibilities of them getting deployed the possibilities of them like going to schools and tdy's and all these things where they're gone for like a certain period of time instead of like the regular work day which is like nine to five they might be leaving and having to do like other things that can result into you feeling like I'm alone in this like strange and new place. I don't know how to feel about that. These are things that y'all have to talk about. Okay, that was the first one. I feel like we spent too much time on the first one. <laughs> well, the agreement part, because I said communication and agreement. Do you agree to doing these things? That's something that y'all have to ask each other before making this choice and before understanding like, Okay, I'm about to like support him through this. A lot of spouses, all they hear is the good. They hear the fact that they will have um, a better environment, a better, li better living circumstances, but they do not really make agreements with their partner who is actually trying to join. And one of the biggest agreements they don't make is, can I or will I support you through this? And support means through the good and the bad. So y'all definitely de definitely need to know that communication needs to come with some sort of agreement. Like, can I handle, like your partner should be asking you if you are in a mental space where you can handle the possibility of being a thousand miles away from your hometown and it's not easily accessible for you to go back home. And then if you agree to that, then, okay, cool. Are you mentally in a space where you can raise the children by yourself? 
if I end up having to go to like a long training or if I need to get deployed. That's stuff that you need to be like communicating. And then when you guys make these agreements moving forward, I think it's best that you remember what you agreed to. And then that truly, do you really want to do something like this? Because don't make an agreement to the to your your partner about him or her joining and you didn't really like want to say yes, you know? Like be honest with yourself because once you get in it, it it's it's really hard. It it can get really hard sometimes. Um expect my second point would be expect the unexpected. So as far as being a military spouse and just supporting your partner while they're serving, you cannot expect things to go the way that you want them to go. You can't expect things to go the way that your partner may tell you they're going to go. There is several, several times that my husband will tell me, oh, today I'm going to be getting off at one o'clock. It's an early day. And I get excited. And then I start making things like I start doing things around through the day that, you know, are based off of what he said. And then he will call me or sometimes I don't get a phone call. But if he calls me and he's like, um, yeah, I'm not going to be coming home till six o'clock. The last thing I tried to do is badger him and be like, what's going on? You told me you're going to come at home at, you know, one. Like now you're saying six. I tried not to do that. I didn't say I do not do that because sometimes I, sometimes I do. But I try not to do it because it doesn't help the situation. It's not that they don't want to be home with you. It's not that they don't want to come home to you. And, you know, it's just that is how it goes in the military. They could literally not have anything to do at work. And so because they have nothing to do, they feel like, okay, this should be a, a short day. So I'm just going to tell my family I'm coming home around this time. But because higher ups say, we don't want you to leave, they have to stay. There's nothing they can do about that. And also, like, you may have felt like, okay, I need you to be home for this or I need you to be home for that or like, you know, a really good, a important holiday, birthday is coming up and they can't be there. That's just how it goes. Always expect the unexpected. Maybe every year that you guys have been in this life, they've your your husband or your wife has been able to be there for your child's birthday. And then all of a sudden, this one year, they can't be there because they have deployment or they have a training or they're going to the field. It could be anything. It's best not to get so caught up on these sudden changes. If you're a person who just does not do well with sudden change, y'all got some things to talk about because in the military, that happens a lot. It happens a lot. And it plays a big role on people's marriages a lot. And we want to be like, okay, well, he can't control it. He, there's nothing, you know, it's not his fault. But that doesn't take away the fact that we feel left out. It doesn't take away the fact that we feel lonely. It doesn't take away the fact that it hurts. And because all of those things still matter, like our feelings matter. So we should still communicate that to our partners. But at the same time, if you already come in with the mindset that these are things that can happen, it's less of a disappointment. So that's why I'm just saying like, just basically unexpected, expect the unexpected at all times. I don't care how long things have been smooth sailing. It may not, it, I'm, I'm almost 95% sure that no one gets in and it's just smooth sailing the entire course of their career. So expect the unexpected, honey, because... He may not be home for dinner <laughs> and that's just going to have to be okay. I know you made that pot roast and with the carrots and the celery and stuff and you even put the Coca-Cola on top of it and let it in the cook crock pot for hours and he was ready to serve him that roast beef or that, what did I say? Whatever. But he can't eat that. He can't, eat, there's nothing he can do. He wanted it too. He's, she wanted to come home to some good old pot roast. There's nothing that they can do about that. And you have to be willing to swallow it and say, you know what? This is the life that I've chosen. So yeah, 
they're not always in control. Uh, matter of fact, a lot of military persons, they're just really never in control. Um, communicate this, the third point. This is the third point. Sorry, y'all. Communicate through your loneliest moments. Okay. So it's, as being a military spouse, honey, you're going to be lonely. You're going to be severely lonely a lot of times. And, you know, it's, the good news is that you're going to meet a lot of other people who are spouses as well, who feel the same way. And then you can partner up with them and you guys can really like, you know, build good bonds and relationships. You guys can go walking together, go to the park with the children. I know here at Fort on Fort Bragg, the library is amazing. They do story times and a lot of the mothers get there and we just like exchange stories, feelings, thoughts, all that stuff. And they give advice, like we give advice to each other about different things that we may be going through at the same time. But you can confirm that I am not the only one going through this. Almost every military spouse is going, has gone through this or is going through this. So you're really not alone, but you might feel lonely in your marriage. Like if you went from you and your partner, like if you guys did a lot of quality time or you guys value quality time or maybe you guys are newlyweds and he or she has chosen to join newly into you guys' marriage, you may feel like I didn't even get a chance to really spend a lot of time with my partner. You're going to have a lot more moments like that. I'm just going to be honest. But if you communicate through this, I promise you, it feels a whole lot better. Rather than you trying to hold it in and bottle it up, and then one day you explode because it's been going on days, weeks, or months of you feeling like this. I don't want to say that, you know, I don't want to give them too much of a pass because a lot of the times military personnel, like they get so wrapped up in their being a soldier that they can easily forget to save a little bit of time for their spouses when they come home from work or like make it a priority to plan dates on the times that they have off or things like that. And then if you guys have children, it makes it even harder because when you guys are free, you guys put both of you guys' energy together into the children. But you're going to feel lonely a lot. And you're probably going to like result into thinking like, my marriage, is it even like, is this even healthy for me? And I, before your mind gets to wonder, because like before your mind gets to wondering, wandering, if you know that you're an overthinker or an irrational thinker, I highly, highly suggest that you communicate through these emotions. Because if you just let it like run, there is a high possibility that that loneliness will take a big toll on your marriage and you could end up in the divorce realm. A lot of women go through feeling super, super lonely being married to someone in the military. And I feel like the higher rank or the, the like if they have a good job, they're, I feel like they're gone a lot more than my husband. He's a mechanic, but, you know, he's still busy as a mechanic, but he's, I mean, compared to a medic, they're, I'm pretty sure the medic is busy and if you have children you may feel like oh my gosh I feel like I'm a single parent and you may feel just completely alone but you need to talk to your spouse like you need to talk to your husband or wife about these feelings because I guarantee you they feel the same way you feel like when I went to my husband one time and I told him I just really feel like we don't spend any time together and I feel like ever since we got, like, the beginning of when we got married, because my husband was already in when I married him. So I married him while he was already adapted to this stuff. And I just was like, what did I get myself into? Because I'm always in this house by myself. Like, literally, when we came back from our honeymoon, he went to, um, he went TDY in Kentucky. And he was there for two weeks. He came back home for two days. Went to the field for one week came back home to take a shower, talked to me or whatever, took a nap, went back to the field for another week and then came back home. And then after that, he was talking about going to BLC, I think, 
something like that. Yeah, I want to say BLT, but it ain't no BLT. <laughs> but he was literally on the go, on the go. And we're newlyweds. And I'm like, uh, you're never home. And I want you to be home. Like, what if I was ready to, like, make a baby? Like, all this stuff was coming into play. And it was really, really hard. And I felt like, oh, my gosh, what did I get myself into? Because this is not what I imagined newly married. But once I started talking to him about how I felt, I realized he felt, he felt the same way. Even though, like, they keep him busy to where he can't just sit in his thoughts like I can, he still felt like man, I just want to be with my wife. And that to me makes me feel like, okay, it, it it just really cancels out the fact that this, he doesn't care or that he doesn't feel that way or that I'm just being sensitive. If you just talk about it with your partner, you'll most likely come to the, to the same feeling. Like you guys will both feel the same. But if you let your mind wander and then you're an irrational thinker and an overthinker and you just start playing on the fact that, you know, I made a mistake. I'm away from my family. All I do is take care of these kids. I never see my husband. I never see my wife. And if you just think in that negative space all the time, you're not going to make it as a military spouse. You have to be a very selfless person. You have to be mature. You have to be understanding and you have to be a communicator to be a military spouse. Those are all the things that you need to be. You have to be willing to know that there is, like, you have to be understanding that there are going to be some hard times ahead of us. But just like, you know, everything that I just said is typically the same thing. It applies to people who aren't military and they're married. You have to think this way in general as a mayor in like being married. So these are not really like different skill sets because you are military. You, you want to use these things newly married or in your marriage in general. But being in the military, like you, like when you guys like get in this lifestyle, you kind of want to depend on that more. Being great at communication and being understanding each, like both you guys have to be understanding because there's a lot of times that us military spouses We'll tell our husbands or our wives how we feel and because they're stressed out from work or like, you know, they're just so caught up in that lifestyle of like working and, you know, being a soldier. They can be very insensitive to how we feel and make us feel like, you know, we're just being whiny or all that stuff. So it has to work both ways. But I'm just speaking on like the military spouse perspective. You definitely need to be a great at communication, understanding, selfless, and mature. <laughs> very, very mature in knowing, you know, this does not determine my love for my husband or my wife. Which goes back to the first point I made. Like, the first point I made is actually the, the most important one out of the five I have. Because... Everything that I'm saying now, like if they're thinking about joining, y'all need to be talking about this like right now. And you need to make sure that you have agreed to do this. Like if, like I said, me and my husband, we play scenario. So if y'all have to play scenario, play scenario. But y'all two need to sit down and y'all need to really say like, you know what? I need, like if, if she's joining or he's joining, he would come to you and he needs to be like, I need your support. And knowing that there's going to be times that I can't do everything. I can't be everywhere. And I may not, you know, just be there for you for everything. But I love you. I want you to know that I'm always going to love you. And your support to me through this matters. And if you say, you know what? Yes, I'm going to support you. I agree 100% to this lifestyle. Then y'all need to make sure you truly feel that way about one another before joining this life just for you to come here and just get a divorce that's very sad and i and it takes a really big toll on the military personnel when they get divorced they feel like they end up getting into really really bad depressive states when they've lost their family due to something that's so easily fixable uh where am i where am i where am i Create independence. So are you a very independent person? This is something that you need to know. 
before saying I'm going to be a military spouse. If you are very dependent on your partner, mm, you might want to start working on that independence sis because you need to be very very independent <laughs> i was very bad at being independent i was very codependent on my husband and there would be a lot of times where like i said that lonely that loneliness would take a good toll on me and i didn't want to explore life on my own i wanted to do it with my husband but i wasted so much time doing that because I ended up having children and children make it harder to explore. But I was, when I didn't have children, I could have spent that entire time exploring all my options, like going to college or finding a nice job to work or just going out in the world and exploring whenever my husband just wasn't available or wasn't around. Um, but I didn't do that. I learned that after having my first daughter, which made it incredibly harder for me to go out and be independent because I am, I have the sole responsibility of making sure that the children are taken care of while my husband is doing this. So you need to have independence. When you feel like, okay, my husband is not, like he's going to go away to training or he is getting deployed. You need to be confident that you are going to be able to go out and you're going to be able to explore. You're going to be able to um, like say, OK, this is a great time for me to pick up a nice hobby or go to college or do something for yourself. Have your own life. Don't wait, because if you keep waiting, it's going to get like worse for yourself, not for him or her, but for you, because they're going to be happy that you waited, but it's not going to be long before they have to go back and, and do what they need to do. And you're going to be like, okay, well, I guess I'll just go back to waiting and you'll just get depressed and you don't want to go home and you want to get a divorce and we want to avoid those things. So just have your own life, please. In my last video, I talked a lot about how hard it was for me to go out and make friends, me to go out and really just like explore and do stuff like that because I just had anxiety. But the more that I built a relationship with God on and did my own journey, I love being alone. I love when the kids are where the kids are and my husband is where he is and I can go to the gym. I can go on a walk. I can have a picnic with myself. I just, I'm so loving my own independent moments to where he'd be like, oh, I'm, I did want to go to the movies with you, babe, but I have to do this. And I'll be like, okay, that's fine. You know, just give me the food, for this, the money for the concession stand. And I'm, I'm going to go. I'll tell you how the movie was when I get back. <laughs> so it gets better, but you need to have your own independence for you to see the better. So if you don't have that now, I would highly suggest you work on that. Raising children. This is the second most important thing, okay? This. Now, children alone have a huge impact on marriages because it's a life changer. You're never going to get rid of those kids. You're never going to not be a mom. Or you're never going to not be a father. But having children and raising children while one of the partners and the parents are military is another ball game because of the so much of how they are like they're obligated to put the military first and you are obligated to now put the children first and you will maybe like there'll be like several several times where you feel like a single parent like oh my gosh before I, I can't sleep I have to be up super early because my husband or my wife has PT and I have to be like if you have younger children it's harder now, back in the day, when we had our daughter, they only gave my husband like three weeks and then he had to go back to work. He can take leave, he has leave, but he had to go back to work after three weeks. Now they give the daddies and the mommies three months. So they have three months to be there for you. And then after that, they have to go back to work. Um, so I highly suggest that if you're trying to have a baby while they're in think about family coming after that three month mark like if you want to bring your mom down after the three month mark or your sister some type of family to help 
and support you through that through for maybe another extra month or however long you need it because I, they are going to have to go back to work and moving forward you will be like obligated to take care of those children 99 percent of the time but you you will feel like a single mother but that doesn't necessarily say, mean you are a single mother and in my last video i was like really big on like single parenting but it's not really that it's still very much parenting in general because if you got a good man or a good wife they're going to come home and they're going to give everything they have in them left to be there for your children and help you with the children. Like my husband comes home from work and he gives his 100% to our children and I get to go and do whatever it is I need to do to regroup myself. If I'm overstimulated, I may say, okay, you're home. Can I go take a walk? Like he doesn't even take his boots off when he comes home from work. And it's not because I'm not encouraging him to go and take a shower and unwind it's just he's so headstrong on coming home and just relieving me because he understands how much it really plays a, like it, it can be on mental health for a woman as far as like the postpartum and all that stuff so because we've experienced postpartum depression and he's seen me at my lowest. He has like dedicated himself in a lot of ways to just, when he's home, he's home. And there are, because he does that, there are times where I have to tell my husband, like, you need a break too. And I definitely encourage him to like have daddy time. So he loves to like tuft, he makes carpets. So he may go and he may make a carpet or he may go play basketball. Like Sundays are his day. Sundays he can watch he can he cho he I like when we all go to church and most of the time we all go to church together but sometimes he will skip church and he will stay home he'll take a nap he'll tough to make a rug and then he goes and plays basketball and I'll cook dinner like I pick Sundays to make foods that he like to eat and it's because it's an appreciation man like you gotta show them appreciation because being in the military is very hard it's very hard imagine you in some boots in this long suit and you're in the heat walking around all over the place out of formation listening to someone tell you what you kind of already know or you got to pull 24 hour duty or you got to go tdy or you got to go in the field and you're doing all of this trying to manage your individual things that you like to do and then the children and then your wife like or your husband that's hard so you do want to take time out to like show them appreciation. But when the children come into play, it gets a little sticky. But like everything I've stated before, communicating, making agreements, scheduling, like scheduling is a good tool to use when you have children. Use schedules. All of these things will really, really help you guys stay in a loving marriage and in, in, a, in a healthy marriage. And then because mili like military personnel all really stick together, they have babysitting pages. If you can't get the babies in daycare and you may need like two days out of the week to like get yourself together, you and your partner, y'all could talk about maybe hiring somebody for two days out of the week that will come and sit with the children so you can rest or you can focus on things that you like to do so that you just don't feel so caught up in the children and then on top of that, you're experiencing loneliness and you're missing your husband or your wife. These are things that can definitely be resolved, y'all, and talked about. And that's the life of a military spouse. It's just literally through the support of the military personnel, you will experience loneliness. You will feel like a single parent sometimes when children come into play. It's scary moving away from your family and if you're codependent on your on your partner, you have to learn independence because you're going to spend a lot of time alone. That's There's really nothing else to it. Like, I'm not going to talk about all the benefits that you'll get because that's Google. Like, you can Google those things. But if you really, like, want to know, I want to be real and honest with you about, like, what we really do experience because free health care, okay, we get TRICARE, but TRICARE doesn't help my marriage. And... 
dental doesn't help my marriage, which we don't get free dental. You have to pay for that to be a, like a part of your TRICARE. Uh, daycare doesn't help my marriage. Like all of these benefits, military one source, that doesn't help my marriage. Um, none of these things can help that part. These are things that really are the biggest things, like the aspects to being a military spouse. So on that note, I think we're finished here. Um, I would like to leave you guys with quick, quick prayer, prayer over all of the new, I don't even know what to call us, the new military spouses. Welcome, first and foremost. And I would just like to pray over you guys really quickly. Okay. Heavenly Father, I thank you for allowing me to be able to give the advice and the information to these other women and men who are going to be supporters to their husband when the, uh, their husbands or their wives as they become military personnel. This lifestyle is very hard, God, and you know that. You know how many women have suffered through anxiety or depression or confusion or frustration and how it has taken a toll on their marriages, God. And I ask you today to allow everybody to have find this video useful and informative to, to encourage them to moving into this lifestyle with positivity and um, hopefulness and no fear moving forward because this is a new journey for the both of them. This is a journey for the spouses, God, and it's also a journey for the these soldiers as well. And with communication and you most importantly involved in their household, their marriage and their family in general, everything is possible. Nothing can come in between them, God. Nothing will destroy that destroy our, the spouses. I just ask that you really touch them in knowing that everything is going to be okay moving forward in this lifestyle. In Jesus name, I pray. Amen. Okay. So if you guys want any more videos or have any questions, please list it in my comment section. And then also like if you are a military spouse and you've been a military spouse longer than I have, I've only been a spouse now for four years, about to be five. Um, and you have any useful advice, also put that in the comment section below. If you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe and bye. <laughs>